Hello and um, welcome to another episode of Heal and Shift. I'm your host, Sunita Passi, and delighted to see you. So just a little bit about the podcast uh, before we meet our guests today. Um, each time on each podcast, I talk with people who are active in the world of creating change. So whether they're working with individuals or communities, and they might be working with methods that are rooted in business, or they might have old and new approaches to spirituality or well-being, in fact, even you know, healing in its myriad forms. What they share is a desire to work for the good of people and the planet in ways that actually seed change. And in the course of their journeys, they've experienced insights that make them more of the people we can all be at our best. So these are conversations I love to have, um, regardless of who else is listening. And knowing you've joined us makes me grateful for all of those of us on the same wavelength. So let's tune in together. So today we actually have a duo. Uh, we're going to be speaking to uh, Kate O'Brien, who is um, a, a wonderful lady I have known for, for many years now. Gosh, I think probably going back six years, Kate. And um, Kate has been in the wellness industry for 25 years. She's a qualified dietitian. She also has um, a diploma in cosmetic science. So she's very passionate about skincare. She's the author of nine health and well-being books, and she's also the co-founder of My Satsang, which is a platform specifically um, for those of you who want to delve deeper into, um, into holistic health, um, into spirituality, um, and into consciousness, I should say. And then also Tara. Tara is a wellness practitioner. She's been in the industry for over 20 years. Um, a holistic therapist who specializes in mindfulness-based practices, you can say. Um, she's a qualified homeopath, an advanced yoga teacher. Um, she's also the uh, lead trainer for the Dr. Hauschka brand, who um, uh, have an office here in the UK in Oxford. And her work really interweaves three specific disciplines. And so very specifically yoga nidra, also nutrition, and then also her um, homeopathic skills. So we are going to have a very interesting interview today. And um, Kate, I thought we'd just kick off with you, Kate. Um, now, you know, that's quite some CV. And uh... <laughs> Thank you, Sunita. <laughs> <laughs> you know, others might be listening and they might say, gosh, I'll be lucky to do one of those things in my lifetime. So you know, what's your favorite thing you currently do? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so fortunate because as you said, I've been in this industry for a long time and now I've got to the stage where I really am weaving together everything that I love and it's all coming together really nicely, um, which is quite funny, it's wonderful, but it's, it's in the last, probably in the, in the last year, um, you know, I went through, I'm in my 50s and I went through a number of years and I was dabbling in different things and I love my writing and I'd written my books and I went on to study yoga to become a yoga teacher and now I'm bringing in everything. All of this is coming together in a beautiful package that I'm, I'm just loving and that's what my satsang is, you know, which is so amazing and I'm doing other work as well but this I'm, I'm you know, so passionate about because I think what we're doing, what Tara and I are doing is needed now more than ever, ever before. And people are wanting to go a bit deeper. They're asking questions and we know the way things were just wasn't working. So, you know, this is this is something new. It's different and it's an opportunity for others to join us on this journey. So I'm I'm super passionate about everything I'm doing now. So it combines my background from my nutrition and um, which obviously comes into self-care to everything that we do and um, I've been learning some Ayurveda from the wonderful Sunita Passi who I'm speaking with now who is actually one of our teachers on my satsang which is fantastic and um, bringing skincare which that's how Tara and I actually met through yoga and skincare we're both super passionate about both and both qualified in in both of these areas as well and 
bringing it all in together and my yoga and I'm getting more as my yoga journey develops, which mm -hmm. seems to happen with a lot of people. I've been practicing yoga for over 20 years and I qualified as a teacher probably about three years ago. And the, what I, I, I love my yoga practice. I love my asana practice. I need it physically. But as I went deeper into yoga, it's that's when the shift started to happen. And that's what people do find. And that's mm -hmm. where I get more involved in the whole spiritual end of it. And I want to learn more and I want to feed my spirit as well as feed my body physically. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing in my satsang. So it's all coming together in such a beautiful, beautiful package. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're authentic and we're so passionate about it. And mm -hmm. those who have joined us are loving the journey as well. Yeah. And you know, you you are the pair of you. You're united by purpose. You know, this is it's really quite a magical story and journey. And um, you know, I know that what I love about your work is it's good for the soul, it's good for the brain, it's good for community, yeah. it's good for all of these things. And we need yes. more of this in yes. the world. Um, and um, you know, I also know that you you've had a lot of adventures around sound healing. So. Um, so those those that may be listening, can you tell us a little bit more about that and those experiences? Yes, again, as I've delved deeper into this whole area of yoga spirituality is when my adventure started in, in that area. I lived in Asia for close to 20 years, went over there for six months <laughs> and ended up staying for in Hong Kong mostly for almost 20 years, which was just incredible, such an incredibly rich, diverse experience. And that's where I first encountered it um, many years ago, actually, when sound healing was sort of completely poo-pooed in other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think it was in Thailand on my first experience with gongs. Mm -hmm. And it was through Kundalini Yoga, which mm -hmm. those of you who are yogi, any yogis listening will will know that in my, not all kundalini sessions but in in many kundalini classes it, it will finish when you're in svasana with with a gong and oh my gosh it was just magical and it's it's the vibration when it just pulses through the body and um, for me just seems to do something that not many mm. other things do mm -hmm. um, mm. and i've since then i've experienced i've had crystal bowl healing in caves in again, I think in Thailand and also in, in Vietnam and um, drums are quite powerful. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, which I only realized I was writing an article recently on sound healing um, for an international magazine. And it was, you know, the drums, the reason they, they people really do find them quite, quite special and quite profound is that they, they replicate for a baby in the fetus that the sound of the drum replicates the heartbeat mm -hmm. and it really can bring people back mm -hmm. to the womb, to that cosseting environment of the womb. So, you know, there is so much, and even singing, you know, singing is amazing. And Tara mm -hmm. O'Rourke here, who's an amazing singer as well. <laughs> um, so it, it, all of it, you know, and, and people, people find different things will work for them. And that's, you know it's it's we're all different mm. and that's why I really would encourage people to try different things even if it doesn't work at least you've tried it mm. but you may be you may be pleasantly surprised mm. you know and you might think oh why would I be going to a sound healing session poo you know but try it mm. and you may find that wow the the yeah 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 and Tara Cavus is telling us about your wonderful singing. Now, now I, oh. um, you know, I um, yes, <laughs> not at it's all. Powerful. I mean, it's listen. To, it's you know, it's it's a uh, it's a powerful tonic. Is it? A oh, Sinead, it. See, my thanks for having me first of all, and it's just great to see Kate here as well. So <laughs> I them are not um, together physically on location. Um. But listen, my family, typical Irish family, we all think we can sing. So we just sing anyway. We all sit around and we still have that tradition at Christmas time. And when we have family gatherings that we we all take turns singing a good Irish song or something. So, um, yeah, it, you kind of can weave it into your mantra then. And you're, you're, you know, you're singing in your mantra, which is just, as Kate said, true sound is... I think we forget how powerful you don't even have to have the yoga tradition you know it's it's in all of our cultures the sound of song and the humming and it's very um profound yeah so I do sing around the house and um, my sister's the same um, my father thinks he is Elvis Presley so <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, you know, I know you, you know, you travel, you have traveled a lot because of your work with the Dr. Hauschka yeah. brand. So um, I'm presuming that's taken you, you know, pretty much yeah. all over. And, and, but you have Irish roots and the Irish, we know also, lo- you know, love to sing. There's this, this connection. Yeah. So, you know, what does, having done all of that and then now, being um you know settled as Kate is as well in in Ireland you know what does Ireland mean to you when you know when we think about it from this yeah. you know this 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 really this kind of this spiritual connection I think and even going back to when like I'm really thinking honestly here like even growing up as a child like I grew up in a fishing village and um there was the woods beside us and I always remember the sound of the banshee um which in Irish folklore is this um, woman with long grey hair combing her hair and she was kind of a sign of death but when we think about death now and death in yoga um, it's more about a rebirth nearly so something has to die in order for someone to grow so it very much is for me um, those Irish folklore and those tales and even the high kings of Ireland the hill of Tara um, is where the High King of Ireland sat. Um, you have two a day Danon, which were these special people um, in Irish mythology. And it's all very linked to the yoga tradition as well, when you look at it. Even um, Anankara, Ahankara in mm. yoga. So there's very similar words also in Sanskrit as there is in Gaelic. Um, so I think for me at this stage in life, like Kate was saying, I'm at an age where I'm I'm not, I'm weaving in these traditions together, but in a really organic way, they're just kind of coming back, you know, naturally, and what you've learned and that you can't, you don't need to exclude something that you've learned. I remember one of the ladies actually really sticks in my head and one of the ladies on a satsang course that we did. um, And she said, she asked the yoga philosophy teacher, Michael, um, you know, she said, I've studied Irish, I'm fluent in Irish. And then I went to study yoga and I was thinking, has Irish been such a waste of time and has studying, you know, Irish folklore being a waste of time? And then when she came on my satsang, she realized, oh, my God, it all sits together. Like whatever culture we are, wherever we're born, we can access the traditions of many um, lands and just interweave them. Mm. Um, We're studying a book called The Marriage of East and West at the moment in our my satsang book club. Mm. And so that is the marriage of East and West and how we can really benefit from one another mm. in these traditions. Mm. So I think if the were if we all thought like that, wouldn't it be a lovely place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, when I think about your, your platform, my satsang, this beautiful platform you've created together, and congratulations, you know, because I think since you've launched, you've had so many uh, amazing workshops and courses and and really taking you know people um into that into that deeper space within them um so that we can start to make these connections and um you know and when you when you bring people together like that you know listening listening has the power to bring about freedom from separation um, and we've just had this funky year where we've all been separated. Mm. So, you know, in, in, you know, in, in that perspective, you know, I think, you know, you know, what, what, again, what you're doing with my satsang really um, speaks volumes for, you know, for where we are now. Um, yeah, can I just, it's neat on that, just to say that that's if, in, in, if for people who may not realize, right, satsang is a gathering, mm-hmm. the word satsang is Sanskrit, it's a Sanskrit word for gathering. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the reasons Tara and I actually set this up in the first place, just as you said, mm-hmm. um, that we just felt people needed a place to come together. Mm-hmm. And back in the day when they didn't have the written texts and they didn't have podcasts and mm-hmm whatever people sat together in satsang and that's how information was shared Mm. and that's why we have in the last since we started probably about a year ago we we have had to have it online Mm. so our gatherings have all been online but Tara and I have oh my gosh we've so many amazing plans for in-person retreats we really really be the icing on, on the cake of what we're mm. doing because it will bring people physically together which we yeah. all need so desperately so mm. so desperately and I think Sunita as well what Kate is saying um 
for both of us, it really, it, it starts really simple. So this came from studying yoga and the other disciplines that we both studied and how can we bring more of this philosophy? And it really came from a place of how can we support people? Mm. Um, and that has been really authentic. So how can we support people? And I'm speaking for myself, but I'm sure Kate is the same. We speak about Dharma and yoga and your path. Mm. And I remember saying to my, my yoga teacher that it actually feels like I'm being just gently pushed mm. along. Mm. Um, and I'm following that and I'm, you know, you, you don't look back, but when you, when you feel like you have that push and I'm sure everybody feels that you can retract mm. back. And, mm. um, but when you follow that, um, and you know, you're doing good things for people and support, mm. people, I think, I believe that, um, this will grow and um, because people will see that it's a supportive community. And also they realize it's not just about us and teachers. You you come on as a teacher with myself and yourself, Sinead, and you even say you're a guide. You know, you're a guide in what you're, you're sharing your wisdom and every single person on that platform has that wisdom to share. And um, it's quite a positive thing, I'd say as well. So um, mostly to date, quite supportive, but we like to bring it, you know, everything in life isn't positive, but it's nice to be able to come on to something that is supportive even though you might have to examine yourself. Mm, yeah. Well, when I, when I was a, a child, I'd, I'd go to the temple with my parents and we'd sit, we'd sit in a satsang. And, um, you know, so satsang, me, meaning from that, that, that tra Indian traditional perspective, you know, being in the company of truth. Mm. And, um, and, uh, and, you know, one of, the, one of the things, actually it was a philosopher, William James, he popularized the idea of, when we sit in that space, you know, actually there's a consciousness that's, that's rising, you know, Tara, you've just talked about feeling guided and, yes. um, and there's a gentle nudge going on there. So, so it's kind of just evolving and happening. And, and William James, he talked about this idea, like it's, it flows like a stream and it takes up a different pace in each individual. Um, and so when I think about, again, how you're bringing people together, um, another word that comes to mind that, um, that when we have the Indian satsangs, you know, that, that we also play, um, uh, there's, there's, there's positive and negative aspects because things can come up for people, you know, when you're in your sitting still and, yeah. um, and, and, and hearing all this, um, wisdom. Um, but also with the, with the Indian ones, we chant with, with bhajans and then we, we listen and bhajan means to share. So it's the, it's the sharing of the, of the morsel of the knowledge. Mm. Um, so I wanted to, you know, you're both your funky, modern, cool chicks, you know, you've lived a really <laughs> vibrant life and you've brought this, you know, this traditional concept to life in this new way. Um, and like you say, you know, we're all ultimately we're all spirits, you know, on, on this planet, having having a, you know, having a, a, a human connection. Um, if we if we just take this to 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 really how on a mainstream level, how people, um, you know, what they what we've all been through collectively. Um, uh, how do you. Um, how would you, how do you, how would you say the experience of satsang? What's it, what's it a powerful reminder of, kind of in a nutshell? Aside from obviously the knowledge gathering. Mm. Um, Kate? Yeah, I think the community aspect of it mm. is, is hugely important and bringing people together. I think people, particularly in view of what we've been through, mm. and I know I've mentioned it, this before, but and it's an authentic community. We're not, you know, we we would love to grow our following and we will, but we're doing it, as Tara said, more organically. We're not out chasing people mm. because the people who come to us, we know they'll stay with us because we're offering what, you know, it, it's, it's very rare what we're offering, as you have said yourself, Sunita. So mm. I think it's that it's that authentic community of coming together and bringing in the teachers we're bringing in are not the teachers with squillions of followers on Instagram it's the teachers who are embodied who who have experience who really want to share and are genuine that's that's what we're about and that's I think 
Mm. Tara, have you, what would... Yeah, I think um, satsang brings, you know, when you think about yoga, I know a lot of people listening to this will probably practice yoga, and even if they don't, we all know that we have or some sense of an energy body. Mm. Um, you know, you speak about the koshas in yoga and um, there's the physical that goes through the energetic body, the mental body, all the way to the bliss, the lambda. So when when you're sitting or even on a vir- in a virtual setting, as like we've learned over the last 18 months or so, that there is this energetic, if you want to call it a field or there's ju- this connection and you could you could feel that energy when you walk into a great stadium, say, or a great concert of music that you love or a football match. Yeah. You no, know, there's an energetic connection between us. And even if you sit in silence you can feel that you don't even need to speak. Like sometimes silence is just such a beautiful part of this as well, sitting in meditation in silence. So we really try and bring an element, even if you're teaching Ayurveda or um, whatever you're teaching on my satsang, that the teacher brings silence to, so it's a practice or something, to be, so you can sit in silence and feel on the physical. And it's not fluffy or airy fairy it's it's you can really feel that energetic vibration mm. and i think that's what sad sign is it's the unspoken mm. also yeah and i think also you know i think also these are forgotten truths you know because our lives have sped up so so much it's not we don't we don't sort of sit and philosophize anymore you know whereas we might have done 10 20, 20 years ago you know i um I, you know i think schooling has changed education has changed so yeah. you know so you're really giving a solution um to i think to really help people slow down and connect with themselves mm. um and um and have the awareness you know have the presence to simply just be mm. you know and um a word you know, remembrance is really key as well there mm. Speak about that because we're so distracted now with you know all of the sensory objects that mm-hmm. sit and remember and that's not drawing up old um traumas even though it might be but it's just to remember how the bird sounds to remember how your granny told that story or you know there's time for that and a lot of the time for me anyway my experience of it is that you come up with the most amazing ideas and mm-hmm. um, when you allow yourself for that time so it's part of wellness um, and it's part of your growth to allow for space and stillness and time mm. and I think that's that's really important you just mentioned the word growth you know the growth that this is an opportunity um, to uh, well, you know we're all a living organism at the end of the day and mm. um, and and these all the practices that you're sharing through the platform the knowledge that you're sharing um it kind of like waters you know it waters the organism uh, and yeah. to support us to grow but i wanted to touch on that a little bit more because um because it's it's you know to sit you see you wise ladies sitting here now talking like this it's it's, it's as if you've always been on this path but i know that's not the case you know it's i know tara you were i think you were a rock and roll kid chick <laughs> <laughs> Total punk rocker, yeah, Mohican. Punk rock. <laughs> Camden Town. Um, yeah, yeah, total, um, I'd say, hard core. Yeah, yeah, I was in a band at 16, a punk rock band, where I sang very badly. <laughs> Can I just add to that, actually, with some of the, the, the best, most respected yogis mm. in the world, Tara, were also, honest, genuinely, like a few teachers I follow in the U.S., have the similar background to you they, they, i'm sure they had more fame and um you know they were more popular we were we were it was a great dublin scene though i'd have to say it was one of the best times of my life that's where i became more familiar with animal rights mm. um, i'm a vegetarian over 35 years and you know that's my choice i know it's not everybody's but um i was made much more aware of how we can again supporting people i think that's just the mm. point was 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 quite strong and supportive then so it was a good thing to be part of yeah, and then I worked in a corporate hectic life like I hadn't I talk about meditation I never sat still you know and that was I, I had a pretty bad burnout I have to say from that mm, did you 
year of just not working and mm. not working my thirties. And mm. um, that was I I think that now it was a good thing. Um lucky to have family and stuff around, but I had a total burnout um, in my thirties. And having that experience, having the corporate experience. Um, what do you, how do you, do you, how do you think, you know, with your knowledge and, you know, experience now, how can we, how can we support, you know, corporations? How can we support people, like really support them, you know, where we create genuine change? Because it's one thing having the odd wellness person, you know, rock up once a month and do a half day workshop, you know, with most people twiddling their thumbs in the background. And then it's different to really seed change, which is what you're doing with my satsang. Yeah. Um, Kate will probably say something on this as well, but I worked in corporate for many years and I think they're very open and um, they realize the importance of well-being. And I think a lot of them now are doing it. It's not contrived. It probably started out like that, um, but it definitely isn't contrived. They'd, they'd have a wellness budget in there and everything. But I know what you mean. Is it ticking a box like by bringing somebody in once a week to do yo? I I teach corporate clients, mm. um, but I also think with my satsang, not that we can bypass that. But you know, mm. people are people. They go home. They have their lives. They work in corporate, but still they can tap into other things. Mm. Right that. And like I remember working in a company O2. You have the same in the UK and. This is about 10 years ago. I, I brought in and I insisted that they had a raw juicing um, section in the canteen. You know, and that was 10 years ago. And they said, Let, let's do this. It's good for health. They proved the benefits. Mm. Um, so you can bring, so say if somebody attends an Ayurvedic workshop with you, mm. they can bring these ideas into their corporate environment. So I think that's the way it works. It's not there's one and then there's another. It's like, how do you get them? We're all people. We're not separate. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. And Kate, what would you like to? Yeah, no, I would, I would agree. But I think they are absolutely opening. They're more receptive, and I think they also most of these sort of decision makers in these big companies, they realize they have to do it now. Mm -hmm. You know what I have seen over with my own work in as, as a journalist, mm -hmm. I'm sort of commentating on the industry, mm -hmm. um, and I write with various magazines globally, and I'm involved with the Global Wellness Institute, mm -hmm. and the rise in wellness was coming to the fore anyway but the last 18 months it is mm -hmm. just like this is the new healing mm -hmm. is is the new vibe mm -hmm. you know you know and interestingly in the sunday times bestseller books mm -hmm. weeks ago mm -hmm. five actually six of the 10 books in the top 10 were all related to health healing wow. which was phenomenal yeah. the first time i have ever ever seen this yeah so it, it's, yeah it's going so it cannot be ignored. Mm. It absolutely let's, not, let's not underestimate the impact that the last 18 months have had. I mean, we had, yes. you know, there's men, there's there's talk of like mental health, mm. you know, pandemic before this. Um, you know, that it's the kind of it's something that is not very it's not spoken about, but I think over the last 18 months, um, it is probably more spoken about now, but it is something that is needs, and I think corporate environments are more aware of that now how to you know and even the work-life balance um and hopefully out of pandemic as well that people will get to have more of a work-life balance that they can work from home and find a blend of two days a week in the office or less commuting stuck in traffic so um we are we definitely do offer that it's kind of you know a bit of bit of light mm. um, yeah and i would just hope that people doing offering you know some companies are still it's just one one 40 minute yoga class a week mm -hmm. but i would just hope that if people continue to do that one 50 40 minute yoga mm -hmm. class a week that in time that they will as happened to myself as happened to tara and yourself sanita well you were brought up in this philosophy anyway but you know that the more you do it the more it i always remember reading a quote which i thought was was fantastic just practice and the brain will follow yes you yeah know, it is so yeah. true and yeah. you know hopefully people in the workplace mm. the more people who who continue to practice mm. within the work when you say that case yeah. when you say that case isn't it so important and i mean we've been going through a bit of a kind of a business thing the last what the last year mm. and it's coming to a head now and um 
I have to say there's 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 you know you, there's lack of sleep at this stage and I have to say and I can categorically stand over this without my I feel my head is in a different place because of yoga and meditation mm. so it's the days where you're feeling and Kate wrote about this in her recent newsletter it's the days where you're feeling not so good where meditation and your practice that could be going for a walk um is so important and you realize I actually feel free in any situation mm. even though you might have tough decisions to make you're not backed into a corner mm. so I think like for people who are listening it's difficult we know to sit in meditation and to turn up every day but you do yearn for it because you feel the benefit of it and I'm sure mm. that Sunita as well that it's almost like it has to be part of my life now it's my nourishment Yes, yes. Can I yeah. just add to that very quickly. Um, mm-hmm. my in the middle of the pandemic, my husband I had to rush him into hospital. He, he ended up with a, a few issues, but I had to rush him into hospital at sort of five thirty in mm-hmm. the morning. Um, and I came home, and I was home by because you weren't allowed in. Obviously, I had to drop mm-hmm. him literally at emergency, and I had to turn around to come home because I wasn't allowed in. And I came home, and I walked into the kitchen, and I just thought it was six o'clock in the morning and I said what am I going to do and you know it, this all happened very suddenly and I got out my mat and I sat on my mat and I did a practice and then I did a, just a short meditation but I could face the day I could face what was ahead of me and it just grounds you and just makes things seem to make more sense mm-hmm. but it is practice so you know my advice to people out there who might have done some yoga or tried a little bit of meditation just just keep with it it doesn't have to and it's also easy. You don't have to go somewhere to do it. That's the mm-hmm. thing. That's the beauty of it. Mm. You know, you can be anywhere. You can be away on a business trip if they will ever happen again. But <laughs> it'll happen again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and also, you yeah, also, yeah. And you and you can you, do it. So and you, can, you can be in your car. You can be. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's so many tools to support to support now. I mean, you know, you you know, with with my satsang, you, you can tap into all of your classes online. If you're in the car, you can listen to an app. It's, you know, there's there's yeah. so many, there's such a, a good support network. And I love that, that it, it's this sort of this emotional charge of socially responsible businesses now, you know, that's that that's that's good to hear that that both of you, you know, really um, you know, have seen that with the work that you do. And and I think wellness is one aspect, and and you know, really I just just a couple more questions. Wellness is one aspect, but but as 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 people start to explore deeper into themselves, um, you know, th- you know, we start to become more consciously aware individually as well. Um, so so um, you know how so if we're if we're sticking with these individuals who are in the corporate, because I know the people that are, you know, are um, members of my satsang, they're already on the path. You know, in Ayurveda, we have, uh, in, in pranayama, we say there's four stages to pranayama, and we say the first stage is awakening the interest. Um, so, so at that level where I think we're some serious, you know, we can make some serious shifts in society, you know, how do we, what's your advice? How do people become more consciously aware individually? What are um, your, what's your yeah, advice? Yeah, so... I always bring it back to real simplicity because for me that's what's worked and um like if if sitting in meditation is not for you that's absolutely fine and it's difficult so it's it's the ability and and maybe even timing yourself to sit for 10 minutes put on your clock you know 10 minutes I'm going to sit here I'm going to feel the discomfort and I'm not going to run away from it and if that really isn't working for you, I, I, I recommend bringing some gentle movement to your seat. You know, um, you might even need to do a bit of an asana practice to begin with before you sit. And then as Kate was speaking about earlier, sound. So even chanting on over and over again, um, bringing sound to your, as you sit in your asana. Um, I'd say that's a really good place to start. So I'd say 10 minutes of that. And I even used to teach in a, a client with a corporate client here. And I'd say, do three, three minutes every day. Like just stop for three, three minutes every day. That's about 10 minutes. And then build it up. Just stop and listen to your breath. Sit down, you know, wherever you are at work. Mm. Just stop for three minutes and allow your low belly just to, to relax and breathe in consciously through your nostrils. 
I'm not at the start. Beautiful. And, and even right? thinking yeah. out in, if, you know, outdoors, even just breathing more consciously when you're out walking or, you know, anywhere, just start to maybe just focus a little bit more on your, on your breath. You know, as, as Tara said with the meditation, I am the, you know, if people are struggling, here's your friend. I'm still, I still struggle. 20 years later, I can do my asana, my physical practice, movement, flowing. I just adore it. Mm -hmm. And that to me has nearly become my meditation because I still struggle to sit in stillness. But also what I, I do find helps is doing, as Tara said, a, a mantra, just something very simple mm -hmm. or listening to a guided meditation. Mm -hmm. If you really struggle just sitting in silence, just tune into a guided meditation. They can be they can be quite powerful. So, you know, and just I, I'm five minutes mm -hmm. and I'm trying to every morning now I'm doing five minutes, five to seven minutes mm -hmm. and getting through that. Some mornings isn't easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's. Yeah. Um, crazy because it's such a short length of time in the day but that's that's me um so okay, you were saying i would recommend as well i was given a, a ram das cd um a ram das reciting the bhagavad gita and i listen to that most mornings now um there's different chapters in it but it's, there's music in it so you could find a piece that you really love and settles you as well and, and just even listening to it um, and then yeah, it's kind of learning as well because you end up kind of knowing a whole chapter of the back of Amazing. So it's great. There's great yeah. resources. Yeah. yeah. There are. There are so many resources around us. I mean, I was having a clear out the other day and um, I think I spoke about this, this particular retreat, um, which was a Vipassana retreat of when I was um, teaching for, for you guys. And, um, and I found the CDs, I bought the, you know, the CDs of the discourse and I haven't, haven't, you know, as I was tidying up and, um, and, uh, and, you know, it's, you know, it's sort of a 10 CD pack, you know, with all the discourses that we were listening to. Um, but though, you know, those, you know, those resources are available now, you know, they're, mm. they're, they're all around us. It's, um, you know, if you haven't got time to sit there and read the Bhagavad Gita, then absolutely, you know, you can get it on audio and, and yeah. uh you know and even you know even you know you know we were talking about podcasts and how many great podcasts there are to really um yeah. you know to support us all um but what i love i mean what i love with with, with you know it's one thing you know li listening but but with what you're doing it's you are you are bringing people together and i think that's 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 what we you know it's going back to we need each other you know we need the energy of each other you know we need the vi you know, the, the, the physically um, to, to, to connect with each other, because um, otherwise everything becomes so automated and um, and uh, we don't flow like a stream, you know, which is yeah. which is ultimately bringing yeah. us back to consciousness and conscious yeah. awareness and, and how it does take different pace. Um, so I know you've got lots of plans, ladies. So tell us what will 2022 look like for my satsang? Tara, would you like to comment? Yeah, so um, lots more of these inspiring and inspirational teachers, not necessarily always yoga teachers, which we, we you know, we've had other speakers on there as well. Um, but anything that we do, the, we always make sure that are these people supportive? You know, the, the level of, I suppose, skill, but experience is important as well. Um, our audience is very much yoga teachers and seekers, mm. um, but that doesn't mean that we can't bring on an amazing musician to speak about, you know, the sound of music or, so I think we have a nice calendar done up for, you know, even for the beginning of next year and for the remains of this year, because we kind of know where we are now with the pandemic. And yeah, to build on the community and as long as we know that we're supporting this, these people, mm -hmm. we'll do, keep doing what we're doing. And I remember, I think it was Deepak Chopra, I read a book years ago by Deepak Chopra. And like, we obviously do need to make a living. Mm, <laughs> well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, but I really believe that if you do the right thing, and I really believe in myself and Kate are with my satsang, that the money will come. Yeah. And we can invest that money wisely and still, you know, make it, a living to support ourselves and our own lives at the same time so we're not 
we're not doing this like completely altruistically either. You know, we, we do want to grow. We want to invest in good initiatives, mm-hmm. support local. And one of the big things that we do in Cade is very much part of this side of it is the, the brands mm-hmm. and people who are doing good things for the planet and the earth with the products that they use mm-hmm. as well. So that's another element to my stat sign for next year. Yeah, so be it be it skincare like you know yourself, Sonita, with with Tridosha and other like minded, and we will be very particular about this that it it will be like mind minded, authentic brands who do, who are committed mm. to the planet and to our set and to its people, mm. um, and we want to partner with these people and do joint collaborations with them, be it be it workshops, be it whatever, mm. and we you know that's that's where we see ourselves going so it will again we're expanding this community but it's a community of seekers and mm-hmm. people who are really living walking and talking mm. um, I suppose Kate, when you say that just so people are clear they're probably not clear just listening to what we're saying that it will be an, a blend of online and on location my satsang and it will be membership mm. um, as well as you can opt in and out of courses but as part of the membership um, we'll have affiliates, so like Tridosha or whatever other brands that you know are in line with their own ethos that our members can avail of those and be open to brands that are doing good for the, the planet. And they get to know about them. And I think yeah. but that's what you're doing is, um, and it's really interesting because I was, um, I'm, I'm writing my first book, Kate, Kate will be aware. Um, and, uh, you know, I've just sort of been um, finishing off a chapter and uh, looking at certain aspects of health you know, from the UK perspective. And, and and I really appreciate what you've just said, because I think that's really important. I think there's a lot of this, there's, there's well, there's a good number of people out there who want to create projects and evolve projects that have, there is, there's an altruistic element in the sense that they are absolutely there to see to change and help and support people and planet and community. But you have to run them professionally. Yeah. You know, you have to run them professionally. You have to have a good business model. Otherwise, it can't get up and running. And, um, you know, and um, so so I, you know, I, um, uh, there was, um, I don't know if you knew um, the guy, the founder of Whole Foods, um, mm-hmm. John McKay, and he wrote, a, he was a bestseller at that time, um, Conscious Capitalism. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think he was probably, you know, a bit before his time then. Um, but but, you know, these are these are the propositions. This is this is the conversations that we have to have as we move forward, you know, so that actually systems and strategies can be put in place that are workable. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, when you you know, even um, I was having a really good look at the NHS and I had no idea how much of my taxes actually, you know, you know how what percentage of your taxes I was just interested to have a look yeah. and actually when I had a look and I never go to the doctor by the way not that that's an issue <laughs> but actually it was quite it was quite a shock yeah it was quite a shock you you're know making, yeah making your contribution through your work so then yeah. you go. yes yes but I mean in the sense of also then having um, a more spiritually motivated membership with my sat sound or you know is um uh, it's um it's 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 another way for us to support our health yeah, uh, yeah. you know and i think uh, yeah when you say that sunita um we're reminded that a lot of the, the people who come on to my satsang are a lot of them are yoga teachers hmm. so if you think about it we're we're bringing these highly skilled teachers to them so they can improve their practice their business their own following so it has a whole ripple effect on that side of it as well yeah yeah. and we're also looking which we 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 hadn't Tara and I hadn't mentioned is that there's you know yoga as we know is huge now and there are there are teacher training programs in every little corner of the Mm. world and they're all people are so passionate about it but often in in some outside of the bigger cities it's hard to get really well qualified teachers Mm. you know if you're teaching a particular particularly when it comes to yoga philosophy Mm. and and michael mccann who's our wisdom guide and my satsang trained both tara and i and we both fell in love with his teachings Mm. and with his wisdom and the way he teaches he's he's just and such an incredible incredibly wise Mm. literate um guide and 
you know, but we've been so lucky, but he, Michael doesn't teach in many yoga teacher trainings. Mm. So what we, and one of the reasons, we, again, we set this up was that we could actually, by having Michael on board, that others, other teacher training programs can tap into what we're doing so they can become members of my satsang and they can use Michael's teachings in their own, be it a tiny little town in sort of the Southwest of Ireland or in, in the UK or wherever. And they can have, their students can, be taught by one of the best yoga philosophy teachers around well the access you're able to scale the access yes. aren't you? and that's yes. for me that's yeah. huge because i feel there's so much yoga has grown so quickly mm -hmm. there are so many teachers coming out every day there'd be hundreds of teachers who've just qualified but many support they need that support the for themselves as well yeah. You know, they're, they're well-intentioned and they're very passionate. The teachers leading these programs, some of them just don't have the experience. And it's really hard to get, particularly mm. with yoga philosophy, it's mm. really hard to get mm. teachers who really, who really have lived. And we have a collaboration with the Mandala Yoga Ashram in Wales. So that, I have to say, was yeah. mm. profound now for those people who attended that for the four weeks that we did it. So again just teaches that like i didn't know we could access you know when i did my yoga training i didn't know you could go to the amandala and ashram in wales or mm -hmm. now now receive online teaching so it's 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 giving we're doing the work yeah to give people yeah. the access to yeah absolutely well their own business and community yeah and those that are, that are seeking like you say those that are seeking the awareness those that are seeking the knowledge those that are seeking the truth you know, they, you know, then, then, you know, from access to all this information, they get to implement it, like you say, either in their own lives or into their classes or, you know, into their workshops um, and, and just immediately into their environments. Well, are you one of these people? Because I definitely am. If I go to a class and I love what the teacher's telling me, I totally lift and shift a lot of the stuff. I write it down. I say, I love what she said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I bring it to my own teaching. So and that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's all about. But like you say, it might not be so easily accessible, you know, if you're living in Timbuktu in the middle of nowhere and uh, you, know, you, yeah. can't get to, <laughs> you can't get to these classes. So, um, no, I think you're preserving knowledge. You know, I, I see it as you're preserving knowledge, you're passing it on, um, really making it accessible for, for more people in so many ways. Um, so, you know, really just, I just wanted to just kind of, um, just finally, you know, the two of you have come together with my sats. I understand your stories independently and the journeys that you've been on. So just tell us, how did you, how did the conversation start? How did you seed this conversation? I let Kate tell you that one. <laughs> well, Tara, Tara was one of my yoga teachers when I came back to Ireland from living in Asia and, um, went to the the yoga room in Dublin and Tara was one of the teachers there and I really loved her teachings but didn't know Tara personally very well mm -hmm. and then it was through another yoga teacher who who knew that I was very passionate about skincare and I wrote about mm -hmm. it and she said you know Tara's a really good she's got a really good skincare um clinic and um anyway I said oh really so off I went and that's how we we started probably about three years ago Tara we and, yeah. we, and then I, my satsang therapist her yeah. hands were incredible and um anyway that's how it's the conversation started and then we I was in with you Tara probably yeah. about it before the pandemic began yeah. and we started talking more and we met for I think we were both at that that stage we were both at, at a place where we knew we wanted to to grow like Sunita as you were saying I think before we come on mm. that um you can stay the same you mm. can do what you're doing you can stay the same and I think that's what I had been doing for the last five years mm. but it was time to to bring something else to this now mm. and myself and Kate that that day we were both kind of thinking on the same level that like it's almost this yearning for that knowledge of more Mm. Um, that philosophy and um, sharing that with people I remember remember Rudolf Steiner because I studied Rudolf Steiner with Hauschka mm. and were well I'm definitely at the age and just from his kind of teachings where we're at the age nearly moving into not the wisdom that's a little bit older but the, the age of where it's time now to give back as well you know 
things that you have learned in life and still be the constant seeker and learning mm. however it's time now not to keep it in here in your own little studio in your own little room it's mm. time to just the tentacles go out so i think that is where we were both at kate has been a writer and that's quite lonely but i'm sure it can be quite you know yeah. you're on your own a lot so i know for kate and me both working on our own mm. but it's a big, it was a big step to work even together with somebody again yeah it takes time and what's what's yeah. what's lovely yeah. sunita and i know tara will agree with this is that the more we've got to know one another the more we we respect and love one another as mm -hmm. just we have such fun together you know we're trying to record we were trying to <laughs> down tara lives in this beautiful beautiful house down in, in Inish Teag outside Kilkenny in the countryside on the river and it is so beautiful and early one morning we went down to the river to record the, the, for our website the, the video about the two of us and like there was probably 20 takes later <laughs> and we were still laughing trying to record uh, you know we have such fun together but also I think we complement one another so well like while we're both coming from we are, are we want we're going in the same direction we have come from very different places although we're both yogis and we're really combining that together and that's what i think that's why it's working for us i believe one of the we have we get on really well anyway and we have fun but mm -hmm. it's also we really do complement one another in mm -hmm. our skill sets mm -hmm. and i think that's super important and we know that the more we go on the more I say Tara now I think you better do that when it's anything to do with technology or and I say Tara will you do that and Tara is a beautiful beautiful teacher she's very confident she's very experienced I don't teach very much yoga mm. and I know with a lot of it it's the confidence I can do I could sort of record meditations and I'm, I love doing that and mantra but I'm I'm not as confident teaching on the mat as Tara is mm. and again that's where we we really do complement one another and we yeah. respect mm. you know Tara doesn't push me to do to to be a, a teacher on the mat because she you're an amazing writer and interviewer and you know so many other things Kate and the wisdom that you have so it's you know you surround yourself with people as well and we, we have a small committee mm. now where you don't have that skill set mm or yeah. that knowledge so we don't need to know everything that the other person knows because that's not what it's yeah. about yeah it's and also with, yeah and you know I, having lived abroad for so many years and interviewed some of the top yogis and philosophy experts around the world we have we have an amazing address book of people to call on for oh. teaching which is quite phenomenal and you know so it's it is all that's why everything we're both doing is actually weaving together so beautifully and we're having a laugh along the way which yeah. i think and that's it with joy and you can see oh that gosh. as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you can see that well ladies thank you so much and it was oh, good to get you. a bit of an insight into your mindsets and uh you know and, and and your journeys as well um and you both you are absolutely both radiating you know radiating really confidence and everything that you that you teach and you share and happiness and um so, uh, so yes, watch this space, I think. There's lots lots more. And I look forward to the live event as well, my satsang live event. That's very exciting. Yes, and you'll be coming yeah. back, we hope, Sunita. And yeah. that, thank you for having us. It's been thank really Thank you for having us, Sunita. Yeah, you're, you're a very gracious, easy host, Sunita. So thank you. <laughs>